Welcome to our segment on Planetary Nebula. Planetary Nebula represents some of the most beautiful objects in the Milky Way. In this segment, we'll talk about what they are and how far away they are. Then I'll show you some of the spectacular pictures taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. But first, I'd like to take a minute to go over how we create these photographs. When someone looks through a telescope, the light from the object falls on a person's eye. To take a photograph, all you have to do is replace the eye with a photographic plate. Here we see Planetary Nebula NGC 2818. It's what someone would see if they were looking through the telescope. It's a wisp. It's very nebulous. That's how it gets its name Nebula, by the way. To the untrained eye, it might look like nothing at all. But if we increase the time exposure and let more and more light from the object fall onto the photographic plate, we get dramatically better results. Get a much sharper image. It's no longer a wisp. You begin to see that there's something serious there with structure. Then, repeating the process with a filter using a small frequency band of light gives us the first pass on color. Repeating this process with different bands and combining the photos produces the full astronomical photo effect. The frequency bands chosen can represent different temperatures of gases or different colors might be used to represent different elements present in the nebula. In 2818, we have red representing nitrogen, green represents hydrogen, and blue represents oxygen. As you can see, planetary nebula are not about planets. They're about stars. It got the name planetary when early astronomers using small primitive telescopes first spotted these objects. They looked like disks similar to what they had seen when they looked at Jupiter and Neptune. Planetary nebula are actually stars like our Sun that are going through a typical end of life cycle. They have ejected much of their mass into their surroundings and then collapsed in a nova explosion that ejects a massive amount of additional material at much higher velocities. The faster moving material crashes into the slower moving stuff to create spectacular formations. This helix nebula is just one of them. Here we have the fluorescing tube or a donut where we're looking straight down the middle of it. A forest of thousands of comet-like filaments embedded along the inner rim of the nebula point back towards the central star, which is a small, super-hot white dwarf. That's what's left at the end of a nova explosion. Each filament is around the size of our entire solar system. Based on the nebula's distance of 650 light years, triangulating its angular size corresponds to a huge ring with a diameter of nearly three light years it would fill most of the space between our Sun and our nearest star, Alpha Centauri. The cat's eye is one of the most complex planetary nebula with surprisingly intricate structures, including concentric gas shells, jets of high-speed gas, and unusual shock-induced knots. These features made the cat's eye nebula perfect for developing a new way to figure out how far away planetary nebula are. The fact is, we don't know a lot about the distance to most of these objects. There may be as many as 25,000 planetary nebula in the Milky Way, but only 50 have distances that have been measured with some reasonable accuracy. This is due primarily to the nature of the nebula themselves. You'll recall the two of our most useful tools for figuring out how far away is it are standard candles, like cephids, and parallax, 
But because planetary nebula stars are surrounded by the debris of their own ejection, it is hard to get a good luminosity reading for standard candles, and equally hard to locate a good star nearby to use for parallax calculations. In recent years, however, observations made using the Hubble Space Telescope have allowed a new method of determining distances, called expansion parallax. As we know, all planetary nebula are expanding, and observations, taken several years apart, with high enough resolution, can reveal the angular growth of the nebula in the plane of the sky. Using the Doppler effect to approximate the velocity of the expanding material, we can calculate the distance the nebula expanded. With that, simple math gives us the distance to the cat's eye, 3,260 light years. We mentioned the Doppler effect as part of this expansion parallax derivation. We also mentioned the Doppler effect in our section on stars. So let me take a minute to go over how we measure and use this effect. Most people have had the experience of hearing the pitch of a car horn, train whistle, or ambulance siren drop off as the source moves past. As the sound source moves towards the observer, the sound waves are compressed making the pitch of the sound higher. As the sound source moves away from the observer, the sound waves are stretched out, making the pitch of the sound lower. In a similar way, light from an oncoming star has its wavelength shortened, or blue shifted, and light from a receding star has its wavelength extended, or red shifted. The key to measuring the Doppler effect is that spectral lines change position. The change in position is easily measured on a photographic plate. The further the shift, the faster the speed. With this Doppler effect, we can determine three important things about stars and the gases surrounding them. We can determine how fast stars and star material are moving towards or away from us. We can detect and measure orbital motion of binary stars, and we can even determine how fast a star is rotating. With this, we can now add expansion parallax as one more rung in our distance ladder. Let's take a look at just some of the most beautiful planetary nebula scattered across the galaxy and photographed by the Hubble telescope. Here we have the Dumbbell Nebula, discovered back in 1764. The intricate structure of this stellar debris forms a dramatic reverse S shape. The structure visible within NGC 5189 is particularly dramatic. Looking at the detail, the nebula shows a series of dense knots in the clouds of gas. Now what's going on here is that the radiation from the dying star is carving the knots into shape, much like water flowing around a rock in a stream. And these are all pointing towards the center of the nebula. The knots are a reminder of just how vast the planetary nebula is. It might look like mere details in this image, but just like in the Helix Nebula, each and every one is the size of our entire solar system. NGC 5189's shape is reminiscent of a lawn sprinkler, with matter being expelled from the star, which is wobbling as it rotates. Similar structures have been seen before, especially in planetary nebula with binary stars at their centers. This is a likely explanation for 5189, but to date, only one star has been found at the nebula center. Here we are zooming into the Ring Nebula, one of the earliest 
and most famous of all planetary nebula. As you can see, it closely resembles the Helix Nebula we covered earlier. We are looking almost directly down one of the poles of the structure, with a brightly colored barrel of material stretching away from us. From Earth's perspective, the Ring Nebula looks like a simple elliptical shape with a fuzzy boundary. But the new Hubble observations show clearly that the nebula is actually shaped more like a distorted donut. The main structure of the nebula is a broad ring of nitrogen. That's the red ring you see. The hotter gas is oxygen, seen in green here, and it fills the interior. What's even hotter still is helium, seen here as blue oblong lobes stretching out perpendicular to the nebula's main structure and looking like a rugby ball. Our first planetary nebula were facing the Earth so that we could see down the tube. On this one, the Retina Nebula, we are viewing the donut from the side. The red rectangle is one of the most unusual nebula known in the Milky Way because of its unusual rectangular shape. This unique planetary nebula resembles the head and thorax of a garden variety ant. It has intriguing symmetrical patterns. It could be that there is a binary star system at the heart of the nebula creating the symmetrical patterns. My favorite and one of the most beautiful of all celestial objects, this planetary nebula looks like a delicate butterfly, but it is far from serene. What resembles dainty butterfly wings are actually rolling cauldrons of gas heated to more than 36,000 degrees Fahrenheit, tearing across space at more than 600,000 miles an hour. Here we have the Rotten Egg Nebula. It has a large amount of sulfur compounds. Cahotec 455 is named after its discoverer, Czech astronomer Lobos Cahotec. This is nicknamed the Eskimo Nebula because when viewed through ground-based telescopes, it resembles a face surrounded by a fur parka. Although this bright central region resembles a ball of twine, it is, in reality, a bubble of material being blown into space by the central star's intense wind of high-speed material. NGC 6751 is strikingly unusual for planetary nebula, and it looks like a giant eye. The nebula is a cloud of gas ejected several thousand years ago from the hot star visible in its center. SUWT2, the central star, is actually a close binary system where two stars completely circle each other every five days. The interaction of these stars and the more massive star that sheds material to create the nebula formed the ring structure. The burned out core of the massive companion has yet to be found inside the nebula. This nebula is dubbed the starfish because of its shape. 
The six lobes of gas and dust, which resemble the legs of a starfish, suggest that the nebula puffed off material at least three times in three different directions. NGC 5315 is a chaotic looking nebula and it reveals a, uh, an X-shaped structure. NGC 5307 displays a spiral pattern which may have been caused by the dying star wobbling as it expelled jets of gas in different directions. MYCN18 is a young planetary nebula. The object has an hourglass shape with an intricate pattern of etching in its walls. This object is known to amateur astronomers as the Little Ghost Nebula because it appears as a small ghostly cloud surrounding the faint dying central star. This nebula's chaotic structure suggests that the star shed its mass sporadically. During each outburst, the star expelled material in a different direction. This can be seen in the two bowtie-shaped lobes. The Necklace Nebula consists of a bright ring measuring 12 trillion miles across, dotted with dense, bright knots of gas that resemble diamonds in a necklace. The knots glow brightly due to absorption of ultraviolet light from the central stars. Although most stars go through this process, only a few can be seen in the Milky Way. This is because over a relatively short time, a few million years, the ejected gases get so far away from the star that they no longer fluoresce or reflect light from the central dying star. Then all we have are the white dwarfs. Our Sun will end its life as one of these planetary nebulas. The Hubble images show that our Sun's fate probably will be more interesting, complex, and striking than astronomers imagined just a few years ago. But not until several billion years from now.